Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining Papillon. In the game of Papillon, you are all trying to get your butterflies onto these flowers or these plants. The number at the bottom tells you the number of points, so whoever has the most butterflies on this plant at the end of the game will get nine points. Whoever has second most will get six, whoever has third most will get three. If there is the same number on there, then both players would get the amount. So if pink and white both had one, they would both get nine points on this particular flower. The rules are not clear as to the way that you would count blue. So if pink and white both had two on here and blue had one, my read is that blue would get three, but the rules are not clear on that at all. So please, if you are aware of that rule, please, please, please mention it below so I can learn as well. This game is all about these worms and bidding for turn order. Once you have your turn order, you're then using that turn order to take a line, either vertical or horizontal, of tiles, and then you're building up your garden. So with the board the way it is at the moment, the very first thing that happens is you turn over the first garden gnome. That just tells you how many more of these you'll get if you take either this line or this line. The only things that these gnome counters count towards other than that is at the end of the game, if there is a tie for first, they are the tie break. Whenever you close off a garden, that's when you're going to add butterflies. So let's run through it. The very first thing that happens is you bid for order. So white would go first because he's furthest to the right and he's choosing one of these spots. Now, he can say, I desperately want to go first and spend five of his worms. Or you play it a little bit safer and just spend one worm. Or he go even safer and spend no worms. What he's going to get is if the other two players go on his right, he will get one more worm. But pink could then go, I will also build bid zero, which suddenly means that white is now going to get two more worms and pink is going to get one worm. If blue also did the same, these guys would push down, blue would get one worm, pink would get two and white would get three. If white goes there, he would spend three. Let's say pink, goes in there to spend one, and blue doesn't mind being at the back, so he's going to get one back. Now the one coming back, that doesn't come out until the very end of the bidding, so once everyone's bid, because you will get pushed further down. On the positives, once you've taken a spot, you can't get moved out of that spot. This new order now gets pushed across into the drafting track, and white is going to be first, so he might go, I will take this top one. So he gets four tokens. If pink then decided to take, I don't know, let's say these three, blue, he might choose to just take this one because it gets him that. Because he's only managed to grab one tile out of there, he would also get one extra tile out of the bag. What then happens is each player decides their locations for how they're going to put these tiles together. Now, the matching flower beds must be joined together. He could do that, that's okay, but he couldn't do that. So purple can't go next to red, we'd have to put red next to red. Uh, that is not able to happen either, that is. Um, there's no blue already there, so what he's going to need to do is join up the green part now notice he hasn't closed off any garden, so every garden he's built is now still open. If we have a look at what pink has done, pink has closed off that purple garden because there's nowhere else that we can actually add any purple to that garden to make it any bigger, so it's closed off, so that will get a butterfly on it. And blue can't join anything together, so he'll just have to go there. We then go to the pollination phase. And pollination phase happens in reverse bid order. So if all three of them, or if even two of them have butterflies that they want to put onto the flowers, blue would go first, then pink, then white. Because pink has that one, he's going to put one butterfly onto one of the purple flowers. Either of them is okay. 
you'll notice this one is worth more points than that one. So it's very likely that he would add his butterfly to that one. So at the moment, he's getting 11 points at the end of the game. Now, if during that last section, he did that instead, he would be adding that butterfly onto one of the yellow ones. Now, because this flower bed is larger than two tiles, it goes through three tiles, he also, because his first honor flower, gets this plus one which basically means he can now add to one of the flowers his choice which one he wants to go for. He's not going to get the other tile or token to be able to keep adding, but that allows him to get more of his butterflies out. Once that's happened from everyone, we finish that round, pull any tiles that were not selected to the side, pull out another 10 tiles from here to fill up the space, another garden gnome, comes up and you continue on. What's going to happen is at some point you'll run out of these worms, which means you'll have to bid zero to get some worms back in. The other way to get some worms back in is that if there's a tile like this that has a little picture of the worm, when that gets placed, we put a worm token on top of it. Whoever bids for that tile or gets that tile in their bidding would also get the worm token. When we get to the end of the game, we go to flower scoring. So that's these numbers down the bottom that I was talking about before. Any remaining caterpillars that you have, or worms, are worth one point each. Any butterflies in closed fields are worth one point each also. So what that means is these are all open fields at the moment. If, for example, that had been put there, this is now a closed field that has one butterfly in it which would get one point. If that's how it was built, this player would get three points for that closed field. The other thing that you will get points for is for the two largest complete fields. So these are all open fields at the moment. Even if he adds that in there, it's still an open field. This is a complete field because you can't add any more to it. So what you're gaining at the end of the game is two points for the two largest complete fields. So at the moment, this one has three tiles, so it would be worth six points at the end of the game if that is one of the two largest fields. This one doesn't have any completed fields, so he would not get any points. And that is everything with Papillon. I hope that you have got an understanding of the game. Please go ahead and watch my game's play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.